My name is Staff Sergeant Lisa Holt from the United States Air Force Honor Guard, and today I'm going to be talking about the different dancing styles. Have you ever watched a show or movie involving dance and wondered how the dancer obtained those abilities? The reason is because of ballet. All dancing stems from the art of ballet. Ballet originated in the Italian Renaissance courts of the 15th century. Noble men and women were treated to lavish events, especially wedding celebrations, where dancing and music were created as an elaborate spectacle. Dancing masters taught the steps of nobility, and the court participated in these performances as well. Ballet has evolved over the years, through, though the strength, movements, and performances learned in the practice are still used in every type of dance each day. Today, we're going to go over where each style originated from and what shoes specifically needed. Now that we have an idea of where dance originated from, we're going to start to get into the different types of styles. The first style we're going to start with is ballet. As we talked about, ballet started back in the 15th century, though it has vastly evolved since then. Ballet today, in the early part of the 20th century, Russian choreographers began to experiment with the movement and costume, moving beyond the confines of classical ballet form and story. There were several different Russians that got with composers of the different types of ballet, specifically the Rite of Spring, a work so different with its dissonant music, its story of human sacrifice, and its unfamiliar movements. It actually caused a riot for the audience as it wasn't typical ballet. Choreographers of the New York City Ballet and the founder, George Balashin, a Russian who immigrated to America, would change ballet even further. He introduced what is now known as neoclassical ballet, an expansion of the classical form. He's also considered by many to be the greatest innovator of contemporary plotless ballet. With no definite storyline, its purpose is to use movement to express the music and to illuminate human emotion and endeavor. Why is ballet specifically the foundation of dancing? The alignment and its musicality requires are only some of the examples of why it's so important. Besides that, the development of discipline and dedication that can be used throughout any spectrum of your life, your improvement of posture, which is good for not only other types of dancing, but just in life in general, and improving of balance and technique. Oftentimes, different types of football players will take ballet on their off-season to help them with strengthening their muscles and also their balance and coordination. Here I'm going to be showing a video of some of the very basic movements of ballet. My name is Megan Wooden, and I'm a professional dancer, choreographer, teacher, and student. I have danced for MTV, Diana Ross, Mark Jacobs, and have appeared in many music videos. You can find more information about me and my career as well as photos and videos at www.ggtnyc.com. I'm going to be talking to you about ballet. The five basic positions of ballet are first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So first position is when your toes are apart and your heels are squeezed directly together. A lot of people try to turn out their toes too much and this creates stress in the knees. So follow your natural turnout line and stand fully supported, very tall, making sure that you're not rolling onto the inside of your foot or rolling to the outside. Make sure your feet and your weight are directly over and centered on your toes. And then your arms are going to be like a round beach ball and you should have your arms directly in front of your belly button, not too high and not too low. So directly in front of your belly button, your chest is open and your shoulders are down and you're engaging your back and you stand in first position. Second position, your arms and legs are out to the side and you actually want to gauge the, the length of your second position by putting one toe next to your heel and opening it up and then extending it a little bit further. You shouldn't have too wide of a second position or too narrow because you won't be fully supported when you're moving around in that position. Second position, arms are rounded and slightly forward. You don't want to throw your arms too far back. So keep them nice, round, and forward in that second position. Third position is used on a very basic level, and it's when you're practicing to get to fifth position. You want to put your heel in the center of your foot and stand with both feet firmly on the ground, feet turned out. Your arms are going to come one high above your head and one directly to the side. Make sure that both arms are rounded and that your chest is lifted and your neck is long. Fourth position, your leg comes out and your heel is going to try to become in front of that toe 
and your arm is going to be coming in front of your belly button. You want to make sure that your fourth position is not too wide, just like second position, and not too narrow. You want to have a pretty narrow fourth position, which will help you when you do turns in the center. Fifth position, both arms are up very high, and your chest is open, shoulders down, and your feet and heels are going to be connected. You don't want to try to squeeze your turnout and make both feet and heels connected fully. You want to follow the natural line of your turnout and make sure that when you plie, your knees are going directly over your toes. So standing in fifth position, your arms are going to go all the way up like this. And that's high fifth, fifth and then low fifth. Your arms are down here. Now that we've gone over ballet, now we're going to be looking at a different type of dancing style. And that is going to be... Hold on one moment. Tap dancing. Tap dance originated in the United States in the early 19th century at the crossroads of African and Irish American dance forms. When slave owners took away traditional African percussion instruments, slaves turned to percussion dancing to express themselves and retain their cultural identities. Tap dancing specifically got more popular around the 1920s and 1930s, especially in Hollywood. Tap dance sequences became a staple for movies and television. Just to name a few would be Shirley Temple and Gene Kelly. Here is a video of one of the most known tap dancing original videos and movies in time, which is Singing in the Rain. Good night, Kathy. See you tomorrow. Good night, Don. Take care of that throat. You're a big singing star now, remember? This California dew was just a little heavier than usual tonight. Really? <laughs> From where I stand, the sun is shining all over the place.
Fire of Gene Kelly Dancing is one of the most worldwide known videos of tap dancing to date. So a question I would like to ask is how do you think that the rain was able to appear on screen? The only way that it was able to appear was because there was actually milk that was instilled to be pouring down along with a little bit of water as well. Back in those days, around the 1930s, 1940s, they really had to get innovative. So they had hot, warm milk pouring on them so that there could be rain in that scene. Besides that, one fun fact about that is that the scene was taken in only two takes, and that day, Gene Kelly was actually very sick. He had about 103 fever, but in the scene, you cannot tell at all. Moving on from tap dancing is a type of dancing that people may know more, and it's more modern today. The next type of dance we're going to go over is hip hop. This style of dance originated in the late 1960s within the New York City streets. Hip hop dance became widely known after the first professional street based dance crews formed in the 1970s in the US. Dances from the 1990s, such as Running Man, The Worm, The Cabbage Patch, entered the mainstream and became fad dances. After the millennium, newer social dances, such as the Cha Cha Slide and the Dougie, also caught on and became very popular. This type of dance is specifically known to not be in studio, even though it has moved into studios now today. It's a type of street dancing that people use to really express themselves. I picked this video here to showcase hip hop dancing because it goes from the 80s till now and shows you the different popular songs and the different type of movements that were popular then.
here that it is a very type of interactive, the crowd gets involved, there's a lot of happiness, and it's a lot different than ballet or tap dancing. Now that we have gone over, one second, this is a home class, so I have my cat here. Now that we've gone over the different types of dancing, we're gonna go over the shoes. So ballet slippers specifically are a lightweight shoe that are either made of leather, satin, or canvas, and they're fully flexible. Point shoes are made of almost the same exact thing, except they have one different component. Now, do you believe that it is just strength alone that allows dancers to be able to balance on top of their toes? It's not. The one thing that dancers are able to balance on their toes would be by using the block that is inside of the point shoe here. The next shoe we're going to be talking about is the tap shoe. This is the modern day tap shoe and it has the metal plates called the taps. Before then, the shoes had a full wooden bottom. Lastly, we're going to be talking about the hip hop shoe. So for hip hop, any type of comfortable sneaker could be used and preferably one that was not walked in outside if you're going to be inside of a studio. So today we went over what type of shoe that we'd be using for each type of dance and each type of dance and where they originated from. Is there any questions? If there are no questions, I'd like to end this with showing you that, you know, obviously ballet is the core of every type of dancing. It helped create different type of dances that we have today and what we see on TV. Thank you for your time.